Hi. August 7, 2021. Swedish professor says five shots of the vaccine may be necessary. Wow. And the FDA already preparing to approve the third booster shot for September. Yay. It doesn't seem that this pandemic will ever be over. Isn't that interesting? Wow. UK Transport Minister says vaccines will be needed for travel forevermore. You won't be able to leave the country if you are not vaccinated. Grant Shapps says that countries will demand full vaccination forevermore and that young people won't be able to leave the country without being double jabbed. Yay! United Nations Special Rapporteur on torture. Authorities are viewing their own people as an enemy. I'd agree with that. Yes, I would. Wouldn't you? And if the authorities, if governments are viewing their own people as the enemy, well, that's not going to lead to any place fun to live. Wow, okay, here we go. Federation of State Medical Boards spreading spreading that misinformation may put medical license at risk. Physicians who generate and spread COVID-19 vaccine misinformation or disinformation are risking disciplinary action by state medical boards, including the suspension or revocation of their medical license. Wow, this is serious. Due to their specialized knowledge and training. Well, doesn't that little bit that just that parse out that sentence and take out that little bit mean that they have a right to speak what they know about this virus? I would think so, but nope. Due to their specialized knowledge and training, licensed physicians possess a high degree of public trust and therefore have a powerful platform in society, whether they recognize it or not. They also have an ethical and professional responsibility to lie. Ooh, wait, sorry. Uh, excuse me. They also have an ethical and professional responsibility to practice medicine in the best interests of their patients and must share information that is factual, scientifically grounded, and consensus-driven, consensus-driven, well, that knocks out the two words prior to that, which is scientifically grounded, because science is not based on consensus. It's not a popularity contest. It's, it's you know, well, oh, consensus-driven. In other words, the official narrative. Spreading inaccurate COVID-19 vaccine information contradicts that responsibility, threatens to further erode public trust in the medical profession, and puts all patients at risk. How dare you spread the knowledge that you have gained through your training, through your research, through your expertise. Don't do that. Spread only the knowledge that you are told to spread coming from the Fauci's and the CDC. That's it. Even though we've heard such amazing contradictory information from, well, that director of the CDC and Fauci. No, you just keep on spreading what we are saying because we are no longer a free country and you do not get to decide for yourself anything anymore. 
And if you choose to, well then, we will yank your license and destroy your livelihood and put you in a box where nobody will hear you anymore. Well, you can listen to this. CDC's Rochelle Walensky is peddling misinformation based on skewed data. But don't expect America's media or social media or places like the Federation uh, of State Medical Boards. Do not expect any information from, well, any other expert that you might hear on other platforms outside of that uh, leftist mainstream media. And you on the left, Democrats, yeah, there really is a leftist media. But keep reading that New York Times. They'll tell you there's no such thing. In fact, I saw this article, couldn't believe it. Somebody claiming that our mainstream media is, it's rightist, right, right wing media. How did we get here? How did we get so incredibly effed up as a nation? So you can listen to this. Um, yeah. CDC's failure to divulge data. Why aren't they divulge? They're supposed to be the trans, uh, Transparency Administration. They were going to be more transparent than Trump's administration, and Trump was going to be more transparent than Obama. Obama, of course, comes in, and he's going to be Mr. Transparent, and yet he showed in his first week that no He's going to be continuing on, just like all the rest. But, hey, continue on with your comfortable delusion, Americans, that we haven't been taken over, that we're not being deliberately destroyed. Everything is fine. Shh, 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 shh. shh. It's okay. It's okay. Don't worry. Everything's just going to be fine. CDC director makes case vaccination passports, they're futile. Vaccines do not prevent infection or the Delta variant, which is what Walensky said. But nobody is thinking in our country anymore because they like to be comfortable. Director of the CDC made an important admission during an interview today on CNN Walensky stated that the vaccine does not prevent infection, nor does it stop the vaccinated person from transmitting the, infec the infection uh, or the variant. Now, it's interesting because I read a comment, and I can't find the comment now, so you know, dare I refresh a page, even my comment page, uh, Suddenly, comments are gone. But the comment was, and I can't remember exactly who, but somebody, a friend, was calling around, you know, these uh, sites where you can get tested, and he was asking to get tested for the Delta variant. And they said, well, we don't test for the Delta variant. We only test for COVID-19. Well, then, how can they know? How can they know if they're not testing for the Delta variant? Because they don't even have a test for it. But, hey, are you having a good day? That's good. They don't have a test for it. So it's spreading rapidly around the world. Ooh, but they don't have a test for it. Well, he called several sites, and they all said the same thing. Hmm. Okay. So, uh, if that vaccine doesn't protect you, and in fact, you can still transmit 
then are we just going to pretend that just redefining everything in our country, as in other countries, but redefining whatever works for you is a good way to go? We're going to let these people just redefine what vaccines are supposed to do, and that's okay with you. No evidence, no data. You don't want any any of that, you know, factual, scientific data, you know, that the consensus puts out. If a vaccinated and non-vaccinated person have the same capacity to carry, shed, and transmit the virus with or without symptoms, then what difference does a vaccine or a vaccination passport or ID make? If, and yes, I heard and I've posted, and uh, Walensky actually say the vaccinated can transmit the vir virus. So why are the vaccinated permitted to concerts and you can eat in a restaurant and you can go there and here and everywhere and you can travel, but the unvaccinated can't? If the vaccinated do I, do I have to say it again? All right, let me say it clearly. If the vaccinated can also transmit the infection, why do they get special privileges? Mm. Mommy, Daddy, how come Tommy is allowed to go out and I'm not? Oh, I have to stay in and sweep the floor. Okay. Yes, of course, the video is unavailable. Oh, really? Okay. And I looked all over for that video, and I couldn't find it anywhere on YouTube. YouTube. Yes, the site where truth is put down the memory hole. All right, New York. New York City protest, August 9, City Hall. Be there. You're close enough to New York to get there? Be there. Let's show the Europeans, the Aussies, that we can actually, well, forget it. Yeah. You know, I have in the back of my, oh, process won't work. Won't, no, no, no. Look, there's a ripple effect of every action that you take. If you do not take an action, there is no ripple effect. With no ripple effect, we get nowhere. With the ripple effect, you may not know the result of your ripple effect, but there is one. Do I have to say that again and again and again and again to all those who want to just shoot down literally everything that people are doing. It's very, it's a very upsetting time. The People's Medical Freedom Rally, New York City Hall, August 9, 12 p.m. Be there, please. Please. And it may rub off on other Americans outside of New York City. Okay. So it is Tina Forte who is uh, organizing this. And I will link below. Okay. Yeah. And Tina Forte is running against our fabulous AOC. And I have to tell you... Um, I really miss New York. The DC swamp is knee deep in garbage and it's time someone takes out the trash. AOC, that means you. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Oh my God. All right. Oh, straightforward. No time for bullshit. Let's just get this out there. Get the job done. Yeah, I do miss New York. When you lose home, 
boy home becomes the memory of it. It really kind of haunts, haunts you. But New York is not New York, not the New York that I left. Anyway, yeah, I know a lot of people are going to hear what she has to say, and she's stuck in the matrix. I know that. I know. Okay, a lot of people are stuck in the matrix, but they're doing something anyway. So, um, okay, I, I, look, I just don't know what to say anymore. In just a little over two years in Congress, AOC made a name for herself at the expense of her constituents in the 14th Congressional District of New York. After living all my life in New York City, I've never been so embarrassed by someone as I am of AOC. She went to Congress as a joke. It's the only thing that makes sense. AOC and her squad of commies are only good for one thing, and that's showing the American people how anti-American they really are. While Joe Biden is asleep, Rampant socialists are running the country from within Congress. Democrats have converted to communists and they are destroying America right in front of us. Just look at New York. The NYPD was defunded $1 billion in 2020 while our country was burnt to the ground. And I will call it out. During the violent 2020 BLM riots in New York City, you can be arrested for shopping in a department store because of a pandemic. But if you looted it and burnt it to the ground, that was okay. It was in the name of justice for George Floyd. It's time for a real patriot to go to Congress and defend the country from falling into real chaos. I'm real Tina Forty. I'm a mother. I am a grandmother. I am a small business owner, and I am unapologetically America first. And I am running for Congress in District 14 against AOC in New York. I'm a mother. I'm a grandmother. Oh, I miss it. All right. She's the one who's organizing the rally. If you can be there, do it. Numbers are important. So, um, yeah, you know, we're in, uh, we're in big Shit, as they say. Uh, up the creek without a paddle. Here you go. And, you know, Paul Craig Roberts is as mainstream as you can get, but minds are closed. You got the left mind, you got the right mind, and, oh boy, where's the independent mind? Where's the independent thinking? No, we got hive mind. You can't listen to Paul Craig Roberts because <gasps> he's a Republican. Ah. Long-term studies. Of All right, I posted on this a while back. All right, but it's important to bring it up again. There is no control group in these studies in these clinical trials. There's no control group. They decided to vaccinate their control group. If you do not have a control group, you do not have a clinical trial. You do not have a study. And you do not have anything that the FDA can approve. But approve, they will. I'll link below. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. Facts, evidence does not matter. Not to that closed mind, believing liars in Congress, in the White House. Oh, I'll believe all the liars, the mainstream media reporters, <clears throat> over the facts and evidence that somebody else will show you. Well, guess what? That's the mind that is really your enemy because they're dangerous and get away from them. They are danger to all of us because they're destroying our lives. But even so, they let go, right, of that 
ah, we'll just, we're going to vaccinate the control group that was supposed to receive the placebo. Oh, yeah, this Karen Mott, she, well, control, you don't know whether or not you're in that vaccinated or the control group. And this Karen Mott apparently, I guess, knew she was in the control group. And, well, then she immediately had adverse effects after her second shot. So she realized she was getting the vaccine or something. Whatever. It, the, look. Oh, my God. They state in this article that this experiment is supposed to go on until 2022. It's an experiment. It's all over. But then you hear it's not an experiment. You hear, well, a mask. Um, one mask. Then you hear two. Then three. No, no, four. Then you hear, okay, take it off. Oh, no, 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 no. Put it back on. The unvaccinated. It's a pandemic of the unvaccinated. Well, now it's become a pandemic of the vaccinated. Because they're the ones who are transmitting. So everybody now needs to wear a mask again. Are you not getting that there's something very wrong with the information that you're getting from the White House and from the Fauci and the Walensky and mainstream media reporters? Hey, just how about for something exciting? Just for one day, put a hold on mainstream media and check out independent media with those are the people who actually do investigations and research. Um, they're not readers, mainstream readers as opposed to reporters. Um, they actually do the work that mainstream media is supposed to just for something new. I'm playing this whole thing. Westerners are being told that they're selfish and immoral for taking international vacations during a pandemic. They're being forced to jump through dozens of hoops to secure a holiday while facing stern lectures about being vectors for new variants of COVID. They're being forced to take multiple expensive tests while complying with onerous quarantine orders upon their return. But billionaires like Larry Page don't have to worry about that. The Google co-founder has segregated himself from the peasants by purchasing private islands in Fiji. He slipped into the country via an expensive program for the elite called Blue Lane, while normal tourists were simultaneously banned from entering. While Page enjoys sumptuous views of the South Pacific on his luxury private island, as he's attended to by 30 staff waiting on him hand and foot. Ordinary people who have lost their jobs, businesses and homes due to the lockdown aren't even allowed to travel there. None of those pesky, noisy tourists are around to bother Page and his billionaire buddies as they lavish themselves in lockdown-free, opulent tranquility. Us and them. In Adelaide, Australia, four babies died after being denied life-saving heart surgery due to coronavirus travel restrictions. They were forced to make the longer journey to Sydney after the authorities banned transfers to Melbourne. But billionaires like Larry Page don't need to worry about things like that. When attempting to secure medical treatment for his 12-year-old son, Page was given a special waiver to enter New Zealand. This at a time when non-residents were completely banned from entering the country. This at a time when even Kiwis living abroad separated from their families couldn't get back through the border. Us and them. The billionaire owner of Atlantic magazine published an article saying that the unvaccinated should be put on a no-fly list. The article called on the unvaxxed to quote, face scorn and for the federal government to weaponize TSA security to treat them like terrorists and prevent them from boarding a plane. But as the sixth wealthiest person in the world, Lauren Powell Jobs 
didn't need to worry about that. She couldn't care less about being jabbed or not as a condition of flying, because she owns two luxury private jets and can avoid airport security altogether. Us and them. Lockdowns caused 150 million people globally to be pushed into extreme poverty. Wealth inequality exploded during the worst economic downturn in a century. Countless millions of ordinary people lost their jobs and saw their businesses go under. But billionaires didn't need to worry about that. They're doing just fine. According to an Oxfam report, they exploited lockdown mandates to further entrench a rigged economy. They swallowed up and obliterated their smaller competitors. Nowhere was this more evident than with Amazon and owner Jeff Bezos, who saw his personal wealth grow by $86 billion as Amazon shares soared. The combined wealth of the world's 10 most richest men rose by $540 billion during the first year of the pandemic. Despite lockdowns causing financial ruin for many in society, for the elite, it was like they hit the jackpot. And yet uber-rich Davos man says your future hopes of economic prosperity need to take a backseat to climate lockdowns. Americans who refuse to wear masks in airports or on planes are routinely kicked off flights. Entire families have been booted because their babies weren't masked up. One man was even kicked off a Southwest Airlines flight because he didn't wear his mask in between eating bites of food. But John Kerry doesn't need to worry about anything like that. He can swan around Boston Logan International Airport without wearing a face covering. He can even go through security without wearing a mask. He can sink into his first class seat and enjoy a mask-free journey. Us and them. According to Democratic Congresswoman Donna Howard, Americans must submit to, quote, universal mask wearing. Parents are now being told to wear masks inside their own homes. But one American who apparently will be completely exempt from universal mask wearing is Democratic Congresswoman Donna Howard. She doesn't need to worry about that. Howard was one of 60 Democrats who boarded a jet to Washington, D.C. to skip a vote. Howard, along with five of her colleagues, later tested positive for COVID-19. A photo of Howard and her colleagues on board the flight doesn't appear to indicate much enthusiasm for universal mask wearing. Us and them. Let's not forget that masks are such an important life-saving necessity for us. Maybe not for them. Unless that important life-saving necessity is briefly slapping one on your face so you can virtue signal for a staged photo op. <laughs> Housing is a human right on three. One, two, three. Housing, Housing is a human right! Everybody say whiskey! 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 whiskey. Us and them. DC residents were told by Mayor Muriel Bowser that a citywide mask mandate would go back into effect at 5am on Saturday. But Muriel Bowser didn't need to worry about that because she timed the mask mandate to go into effect right after her birthday party had finished on Friday night. People who attended the reopening of the Anthem Entertainment venue in DC were ordered to mask up after they paid to watch a performance by Dave Chappelle. But neither Chappelle or any of the other DC royalty who attended Bowser's birthday bash hours before, had to worry about wearing a face covering. After the Saturday mandate kicked in, ordinary folks in DC were ordered to mask up once again. But Muriel Bowser didn't need to worry about that. She was filmed at an indoor wedding, not wearing a mask. She planned to officiate this wedding and attend, and then also put in the mask mandate for Saturday morning at 5 a.m. She knew that by Saturday evening, by 9 p.m., that she was going to violate her own order, which either means she's a moron or she's a liar who knows that these indoor mask mandates don't, these indoor mask mandates don't matter. Us and them. 
Brits were told that they should put personal relationships on hold. They were told to forget about their wedding plans. They were told to suffer the indignity of virtual funerals. Many of them never saw their grandparents alive again. And who ordered them to do this? Professor Neil Ferguson and Health Secretary Matt Hancock. But both Ferguson and Hancock didn't need to worry about halting their relationships while warning that COVID would kill half a million Brits while the population was placed under a draconian lockdown. Ferguson and his married mistress were travelling back and forth across London the entire time to shag each other senseless. Matt Hancock was banging his mistress at a time when Brits were told they shouldn't even be shaking hands with each other. Us and them. People throughout the West are being told that they must take the vaccine if they wish to engage in basic lifestyle activities. They'll be banned from bars, restaurants, cinemas, shopping centres, educational facilities and public transport if they don't take the vaccine passport. It needs to be hard for people to remain unvaccinated. Told not to see their grandchildren as a new wave of autumn lockdowns looms. Told not to have conversations with their friends and neighbours, even if they're wearing a mask. Even if you've got a mask, don't start up a conversation. Told to social distance and mask up again even if they've had the vaccine. Told they're ignorant and selfish for attending parties, baseball games and concerts. Told that they're personally to blame for creating super spreader events. But the global elite? No, you don't need to worry about that. Barack Obama's hosting a giant birthday bash for his 60th, complete with nearly 500 globalist guests and 200 staff. Yes, I couldn't go to That's Granny's right. 90th birthday, but it's perfectly fine uh, for Barack Obama to have 500 people because our rulers are, are, are so much better than us. The, the last 18 months has actually clarified this. Us and them. If this virus is as deadly and dangerous as they tell us, why don't they behave like it? Why are they exempt from all the indignities, hardships and restrictions that they impose on us? Are you starting to think that maybe this is about more than a pandemic? Oh, well... Huh. Let's check this out, okay? His scale-backed, scale-backed party. Obama said he was going to scale back because he got a lot of flack for 500 of the, well, global elite or their douchebags. Sorry, I hate that, but uh, just it came out before I could stop it. Scaled back, not so much. Obama's 60th birthday bash looks anything but intimate Massive tents dwarf the mansion. All of these famous people arriving in their jets. Oh, climate change. Well, we don't have to worry when we get on our jet because it's kind of like that virus. Um, the virus knows exact. It's very smart. It's very smart. And it knows to attack certain groups and not other groups like the rich and famous. Okay, so they can have their bashes. Uh, and you'll see, they don't social distance or wear masks. They do tell you, you got to do it. You know, you, you have to sacrifice your livelihood. <laughs> That's what they tell you, these people. Yeah. You got to sacrifice your business that actually puts food on your table for your children. You've got to sacrifice all of that because if you don't, you're selfish and you're a horrible human being because you're going to be killing grandma, but they don't. They're fine. Oh, boy. Yeah, they flew in on their jets. The uh, airport... Martha's Vineyard was abuzz with jets. What about that climate change thing? Oh, right. John Kerry went also. He was an invited guest. And how did he get there? Private jet. Ripping up the ozone, causing so much of this climate change. That CO2. The tent. The tents, 
the big tents. Yes. The quote unquote rich and famous get together with Obama. The guy that so many people actually believe still walks on water, which is really, maybe this is the testing center. Maybe? Nah. Yeah. He scaled back, but still put up a sprung dance floor. Doesn't look like he scaled back much. It actually looks, oh, pretty much the same length as his $12 million mansion. Mm -mm -mm. They live the life, don't they? No masks. And seems they're not social distancing. Yeah, okay. No, the virus doesn't go to Mothert's Vineyard. Uh, oh, here they are. Close-ups of, I don't know, Christy, is it Teagan? Or I don't even know how to pronounce these names. John Legend. Who gives a shit? Oh, his beagle. Well, stay away from Fauci because that's my next video coming up. And, yeah. Here it is. Fauci led agency funded abusive animal on beagles. Okay. Well, that, that'll be the next um, video. But uh, I don't even know who the hell these people are. Gabriel Union, Dwayne Wade. Oh, they're wearing masks. How cute. They're not social distancing, though. Oh, this one's not wearing. Nope, nope. No social distancing, no masks. Oh, could become a super spreading event. There they are. They must be terrified of this virus when they come out and claim, you've got to give it all up. Give everything up. Otherwise, you're going to kill grandma. We are such fucking fools to believe the horseshit. We get destroyed. They're absolutely fine. You know, don't you think, oh boy, could you, could you please go to that protest, you know, Monday? Someone do, I don't know. I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. I mean, everything's becoming so flippin' obvious. Look at this. I, I, it's really, the runaway Texas Democrats have filed a lawsuit against Greg Abbott for damaging their reputations, causing them anxiety, discomfort, and distress after he threatened to arrest them upon their return to the state. Holy shit. No one takes responsibility for anything, anywhere. Just fling shit all over the place. This country is gone. Why is it gone? Because Americans are gone. They've lost their friggin' minds. Now, they filed a complaint in federal court in Austin, which in federal court, depending on the judge, they may actually win this. Oh, God, Republicans' attempts to bring them home for a special legislative session. Violation of their rights. How dare you? Our, wow. Okay. So they're claiming that their reputations have been uh, damaged because of Abbott. Uh, they damaged their reputations, and I hope every Texan holds them responsible, shames them that they actually have to start, um, you know, wearing a full face mask so that they're not recognized in public and they move out of Texas and not recognized anywhere else. Uh, what do we have? Babies? Are these people babies? What the hell is wrong with, you know, Americans that they are actually just doing nothing? And these Democrats especially are so batshit crazy they're turning the country batshit crazy. Do we need Democrats to stand up and maybe show a little bit of maturity to get rid of these people? Yeah. 
Will we? Probably not. Because, oh, oh, how dare I hold anybody accountable? I can't confront and I'm just a really nice person. Screw that. We are so screwed. We are... This... Yeah, you know, look, if our country went down, let's say we, we were in war, bombs were dropping and, okay, uh, taking over. I think I could handle that better than the way we're going down. <laughs>